Hello and thank you for joining us on Airy TV. This is English News Broadcast, live from the headquarters in Zmara at exactly 10.30 p.m. First, the top stars. Senior Eritrean delegation held bilateral talks with delegates of several countries. Call was made to strengthen teaching learning process in Forosabzon. Heavy rains kill at least 36 people in India. Bomb blast kills at least seven in Afghanistan. In our local news, on the sidelines of the 77th United Nations General Assembly, the Eritrean senior delegation led by Mr. Osman Saleh, Minister of Foreign Affairs, held bilateral talks with delegates of various countries and participated at Group of 77 in China. The delegation that comprises presidential advisor Mr. Yamane Gebraab and Mrs. Sofia Tesfamaram, Eritrea's permanent representative at the United Nations, met and held talks with Mr. Hussein Abdel Baghi Akol Agang, Vice President of South Sudan, as well as Mr. Sergi Lavrov, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Russian Federation, Prince. Faisal bin Farhan Al Furhan Al Saud of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Mr. Dens Mokarda Kalindres, Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Nicaragua, and Mr. Abdul Shahid, Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Maldives, focusing, focusing on strengthening bilateral relations as well as on regional and global developments. It's to be recalled that the Eritrean delegation held similar meetings with various foreign ministers from 19th to 22nd September, including with Mr. Carlos Faria Torso, Minister of the People's Power of Foreign Affairs of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela, Mr. Ramatani Lamamara, Foreign Minister of Algeria, Mr. Nikola Salakovic, Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Serbia, Mr. Demek Amekonen, Deputy Prime Minister, Minister and Foreign Minister of the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia, Mr. Faisal Maqdad, Minister of Foreign Affairs and Expatriates of the Syrian Arab Republic. The delegation also participated at the ministerial meeting of the Non-Aligned Movement group of friends in the defense of UN Charter, least developed countries as well as in various high-level meetings and side events including the Transforming Education Summit. Mr. Ismail Ali, Head of Educational Facilities in Forosabzon, called on parents and stakeholders to increase participation with a view to develop capacity and competitiveness of students. Mr. Smail made the call at the activity assessment meeting conducted on 17 September. According to the report represented, according to the report presented at the meeting, the number of schools in the subzone has increased from 40 to 42, and student school enrollment has increased by 9.4 percent, and students passing to the next level by 83 percent pointing out that the development of teaching learning process is not to be left to one institution only. Mr. Rashid Mohammed Osman, head of the Ministry of Education branch in the Northern Red Sea region, called for integrated effort of the concerned institutions. Mr. Osman Arafa, administrator of the subzone on his part, called for a reinforced effort to increase female students' school enrollment and expand junior school in the remote areas of the subzone. The participants conducted extensive discussion on the report, presented and adopted various recommendations. Government workers in Baron 2 subzone voluntarily donated 124 units of blood on 22nd September. 
indicating that as a result of the sustainable awareness raising activities, the number of voluntary blood donors is increasing from time to time. Mr. Kala Abgavru, member of the National Voluntary Blood Donors Association, called for exerting effort to develop the number of voluntary blood donors. The voluntary blood donors on their part expressing satisfaction for the contributing their blood with a view to save lives with their renewable blood and called on others to follow the novel example. Following a short break, we will be back with international news. News. Hazardous weather has killed at least 36 people in northern India over the past 48 hours, including 12 who died after being struck by lightning. Across the northern state of Uttara Pradesh, 24 people died after their homes collapsed during unrelenting rains. This is according to Relief Commissioner Ramviz Parsat. Officials say 39 people in the state have died from lightning in the last five days, prompting the state government to issue new guidelines for how people can protect themselves during a thunderstorm. Lightning strikes are common during India's monsoon season, which runs from June to September. Colonel Sanjay Trivastava, whose organization Lightning Resilient Indian Campaign works with the Indian Meteorological Department, said deforestation, depletion of bodies of water, and pollution contribute to climate change, which leads to more lightning. Global warming has also increased the frequency of lightning, said Sunita Narain, Director General at the Center of Science and Environment. A 1 degree Celsius rise in temperature increases lightning by 12 times. Thunderbolts contain as much as billion volts of electricity and can cause immense damage to, build, to buildings when they hit. There has been 34% rise in lightning strike across India over the past year, which has caused deaths to increase. About 2,500 people died in lightning strike around India each year, according to government figures, compared with just 45 in the United States. people were killed and dozens were wounded when a car bomb went off at a mosque in Afghanistan's capital, Kabul, as worshippers streamed out of afternoon prayers. A column of black smoke rose into the sky on Friday and gunshot ranged out several minutes after the explosion in Wazir Akbar Kahan, an area formerly home to the city, Green Zone, the location of many foreign embassies and NATO, but now controlled by a ruling Taliban. The Association Press News Agency quoted a Taliban official as saying that the least seven people were killed and 41 wounded. Afghan media report put the death toll at nine, and there was no immediate claim of responsibility. The Italian NGO Emergency Hospital said it received 14 people from the blast, four of whom were dead on arrival. The United Nations mission in Kabul said that the bombing was another bitter reminder of ongoing insecurity and terrorist activity in Afghanistan. Interior Minister Spokesman Abdul Nafi Takor said the blast went off on the main road near the mosque and investigation was underway. The explosion on Friday was the latest in the daily series of bombing at mosque during Friday prayers in recent months. In 2020, the Wazir Akbar Kahan Mosque was struck by a bomb that killed two people, including the mosque's prayer leader. And now we have a quick review of the top stars. Senior Eritrean delegation held bilateral talks with delegates of several countries. Call was made to strengthen teaching learning process in Koro Sabzo. Heavy rains kill at least 36 people in India. 
bomb blast kills at least seven in Afghanistan. That's all with the news for tonight. Thank you for being with us.